Hi, I finally finished my frosted heights and I think it's my favorite that I've ever done. So I did have some already complete. I had these different areas that I had sort of already set up for various things like dream snaps, just messing around with items. My vision is this as a Christmas market sort of area, this as a winter vacation area, and then I was gonna have the frozen castle courtyard over here. So getting started with the build, I think that I kind of was thinking about this in terms of cool tones and warm tones. And I definitely wanted to use a lot of the items that we got in the Winter Star Path because I love them so much. A lot of those are very cool toned items. And for this particular side of the build, I wanted it to feel very warm and inviting. So you'll see in the end, there ends up kind of being this stark difference between the cool toned areas and the warm toned areas. But I think that it ended up being really effective and I like it quite a bit. I also think that this is finally a good spot that I'm happy with for Woody's house. I had him in the Glade of Trust for a long time and I joked that he was my swamp witch because I was originally going to set up his home as sort of like a witch's hut. Does it really match with the carousel theme? No, but it worked in my mind. But one of my viewers on Twitch has Vanellope's house in the Glade and I think it looks really cool. And I think I might have that instead and maybe I'll have Vanellope be my Swamp Witch. After I had kind of set up the basics over there, I moved back over into this entrance space. And what I imagined for this was kind of like this very closed off courtyard almost with those wreath archways leading into the different areas. I've noticed when I'm approaching a large build that what I tend to do is take things area by area and I'll go in and I'll lay down the pathways and just the basic things that are gonna be there. And then I go back around and I start adding in more details. So I'm constantly rotating from area to area to area. And I think that's really helpful for me because I think if you stare at something too long, it starts to look terrible and you start to not know what you were doing and you really get stuck. And so having this little rotation really, really helps me a lot. Once I came back over to the market side, I decided to change up the way that my pathway looked and instead of having it be so long and thin, I made it a little bit more wide and short because I wanted to have more of an area over there on that side towards the bridge to work with. I kind of imagined that the premium house skin right here would be like the cabin that you rent out and then you could take a little trek through the forested woods to get to the Christmas market as part Part of your vacation. I always have these like stories that I imagine in my head for my biomes. And this is where I started really working on the entrance. And honestly, y'all, this entrance I think is my favorite part. So I'm laying out the pathway first, which I always do. And then I fill in the pathway. And then once the pathway is all filled in, then I start taking pieces out to make it look more natural and to get rid of all of the you know, harsh angles. I think it looks more natural when you have fewer, I don't wanna say right angles because they're all right angles because we don't really have curved pathways, at least not this type, but getting rid of certain pieces make it look less square and make it look a little bit more random and natural, I think. So that's what I was doing here. I wanted the natural wooded areas to look very magical. I think those blue trees look so beautiful, so magical. And these items that we got from the star path with the lights on them, it just looks like something you would find in a wood full of fairies. I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but I think they look so whimsical, so magical. 
I find myself repeating the same sort of patterns over and over again when I'm decorating, which I think really works for me. So I always do pathways and then I do trees and then I fill in areas with underbrush and then the last thing I do is rocks. And then I go around and I do that small area by small area. It's just a little system or a method that I have really perfected, I guess, and gotten really comfortable with. I am so curious about what the next star path is going to be. I am so anxious to find out just at least what the theme is going to be. I don't know if y'all saw the survey that they sent out. I guess it's been a couple weeks now, but on the survey, they gave a couple of different themes that I guess they're considering as possibilities and had us vote on them. And some of them were so exciting. Actually, they were all so exciting. It was really hard to pick, but some of the ones that got me really excited were cottage core. Obviously that would fit in so well with my design aesthetic. They also had like mythical Greek mythology, like Hercules kind of stuff. They had classic Disney. They specifically mentioned Robin Hood with that. Can you imagine the cool items that we would get for Robin Hood? I'm just so excited. I'm literally checking Disney's Twitter like every single day at this point. This is where I started working on the courtyard outside of Anna and Kristoff's house. I definitely wanted to go for a very blue theme here because of all of the icy stuff. I really wish Elsa lived here, side note. I wish Elsa lived here too. But anyways, again, I'm using a lot of those star path items like the rug, the snowflake decoration item, the, the deer, and it's not a very large space that I have over here. So I wanted it to look very cozy, very woodsy in a way. And of course I had to put Kristoff's little sled over there and put a bench over there, which is eventually going to be like a sauna area once I finish it up. The main entrance to this is gonna be from the bridge, but I also wanted to have it accessible from the side where the premium house skin is. So I laid some rocks down and put like a little bit of a natural path, kind of like, Imagine you're on vacation and you're exploring and you just stumble across this giant icy palace as you tromp through the woods. That's what I was imagining there. And then we begin to work on the sauna area over here on the side. I imagine this to be a little recreational area for Kristoff and Anna to use. I specifically imagine Kristoff using this a bunch, which is why I kind of put it over there by his sled. A simple little space. We've got the bench. We've got the bookshelf with the towels and the actual sauna item itself and the natural woodsy elements all around it. Back over to the market, I placed out a fence because I decided I kind of wanted to create more of a separation of that area and the rest. This is where I really started realizing how starkly different the feel was of the Christmas market and the rest of the build. And so I figured that fence would create a nice clean separation. And then I decided even in this area with the pathway connecting the bridges to the market, I wanted to have it be those cool tones so that when you passed through the fence into the market, it was like you were entering this whole new world and it would create such a stark difference. 
I decided to increase the coziness of the market by putting these food items out all over the place. I love decorating with food. I think it's so fun and I think it adds so much to it and just keeps those tables from looking really empty because I don't know, I want it to look very full in here. Back to this connecting area, I wanted the vibe to match the entrance area to have it be, again, very cool toned and very foresty, whimsical, and natural. I love this view from the bridge here. I think it looks so gorgeous. I wish that I could walk through this forest. I honestly do. There are a lot of hot cocoa stands here, and I know that there are other types of stalls that have been introduced to the game, especially since Eternity Isles, but I just love the look of these. I think they're so perfect. I put these red flowers down because I feel like they look like poinsettias a little bit, and I'm just trying to add in as much warmth as possible. Those bushes are quite cool toned, and so I figured by adding in those red flowers next to them, it will kind of increase the warmth. Now over here on this side, we're creating a little bit of a sitting area with the brown bear chair, which I love so much. It just really feels whimsical and fun, which matches the vibe very well of this entire market, or at least what I was going for. And then after that, I'm just going through and adding finishing touches, making tweaks to the pathways, adding in some rocks, adding in some extra little details and moving things around just to make sure that we've got a lot of visual interest, that things look good from all angles and creating a nice full biome. I wasn't sure what I wanted to put in this little empty space right here, but I decided to just put another stall and create another sitting area with two more chairs and another table. And that is it. In total, I think this biome took me, I had, well, I had four hours of footage, but a lot of that was just when the game was paused and I went down to like get a snack or something and kept it recording. So maybe in complete total, it was like two and a half to three hours to finish all of this, which is honestly not bad. This entryway, which has the well in it, is meant to serve as the portal, I guess, the room of doors to help you get into the different areas. Passing through here is where the winter lodge area is. So we've got, again, the premium house skin. I do have a hot cocoa stand there for you to use, you know, your personal use when you're staying at the lodge. There's a camping area here with the ice house and the campfire. And as you walk around this way, there is an ice skating rink and the pathway that leads you up to the actual house. So it's a perfect little area for you to stay in. It has everything you can need. And this is the little pathway that takes you in over to the frozen house. But I'm going to come around and go the other way. As we reach the bridge, we cross it and come to this beautiful little transition area that I love so much. Crossing this bridge will take you over into Anna and Kristoff's house and all of the icy decor along with it. We've got the sauna area around right here. And then you cross the bridge over into the Christmas market. Do you see what a stark difference it is between the vibe of that side and this side? I love it so much. I love how full this area is. I love that it's just brimming with food and cocoa and places to sit and gather. I feel like it is such a lovely spot. I would love to see it just full up with people having an amazing time and just hanging out with their loved ones. I feel like that's exactly what this space is for. 
I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to find a good use for some of the Nightmare Before Christmas items. I'm glad that I was able to get a use for them that really, really works for what I wanted it to be. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget I have a podcast, The Gamer's Hearth. Don't forget I stream on Twitch. I love you. Thank you for watching. Bye.